If you're in need of a website or domain, then check out today's sponsor, Squarespace. Hello everybody, hope you're doing well and thanks for joining us for another video. A few weeks ago, everybody's favourite demonstrable realist, Level Earth Observer, put out this video entitled, Do We Have Three Suns? In it, he presents footage from an ISS spacewalk that he claims is evidence of multiple light sources being used that proves all of the footage is fake. Now, we'll take a look at that in a second, but I need to start with a huge thank you to fellow debunker Wes Wally, who has helped so much with this video. I wasn't even aware of Elio's video until Wally'd messaged me about it, and it took us all of a few minutes to debunk the apparent multiple light sources, but Wally and I decided if we were going to make a video tackling this, we weren't just going to debunk Elio's claim about multiple light sources, we were going to absolutely destroy any notion of the ISS footage ever being faked. And between us, over the course of a few days, we trolled the internet and have done just that. We've not only debunked the multiple light sources, but we've managed to pinpoint who the astronaut is, what spacewalk this video is from, what part of Earth they are over, and at what time, correlated that against the recorded weather for that time, and found the uncut footage from multiple cameras during that spacewalk, and synced them together to prove that this was not faked in a studio. Because Level Earth Observer is absolutely adamant that the ISS doesn't actually exist. All the footage from it is faked, and that space isn't even real. Which is ridiculous. Everybody knows that space is real. Sorry, er everybody knows that Squarespace is real. If you're after a website or domain, then Squarespace is the place to go. Designing a website is so straightforward. You choose from one of the many templates available to give you a basis to start with, but then you can extensively customize and overhaul that design to make it personal to you. And if you want to make it more than just a great looking website and you want to add a load of functionality to it, Squarespace has you covered there as well. It allows you the ability of adding blogs. There's a section for sending out emails such as marketing campaigns or newsletters. You can add a complete online store along with analytics to let you track orders as well as general website traffic as well as a whole host of other features. But don't just take my word for it. See for yourself by taking a free trial today using my link squarespace.com forward slash Dave McKeegan. And if you use the code Dave McKeegan at checkout, you can receive 10% off your first purchase. So we wanted to make this video to show the detective workflow that we went through and the results that we came up with. So first, let's take a look at Elio's video and claim. Do we have three suns? According to this rare NASA footage, we do. So let's have a look. I want you to pay particular attention yet again, like we have been doing recently, to the astronaut's helmet. And what we're going to see here is three suns. We can see the sun in his visor. And as he gets closer, we get to see not one, not two, but three suns reflecting. That's three separate light sources. Obviously there's not three suns. He claims there are three light sources shining straight in the astronaut's face. This has immediate flaws, such as that if we were to compare early in Elio's clip versus near the end, we can see the lighting on the solar panel remains consistent, but the lighting on the left of frame changes significantly from flat lighting to direct sunlight and hard shadows and we can see throughout the clip these shadows move, meaning the relative position of the light source to the object that's casting the shadows is moving, but the light intensity across other areas of the ISS doesn't fluctuate, meaning that the light source is relatively far away from what we are seeing. Now, if we're looking at three separate light sources, we would see three distinct shadow casts from every object in the frame, which we don't see. Mr. Cheswick Music commented on Elio's video highlighting that studios regularly use a three-point lighting setup, which is true, but unrelated to this clip, because three light sources in a studio are not placed directly in front of a subject that would just create a very flat-looking shot. 
Three-point lighting is used to create depth to a scene, and refers to having a main light, called a key light, which is the main source of light on the subject, usually placed around 45 degrees to the side of the subject. But this will create dark shadows on the opposite side, so a less powerful light is placed on that side to fill in those shadows, appropriately named a fill light. And then a third light is placed somewhere high up behind the subject, pointing back towards them, which puts a bright strip of light around the edge of the subject to help create separation to the background. This is called a hair light. This is the same lighting setup that I'm using right now for my videos. Anyway, so three separate light sources doesn't fit with the lighting that we're seeing across the frame here. Secondly is the makeup of the helmet. We can see as he lifts up the sun visor, we see a double reflection on the edge of the clear visor. This is because the spacewalk helmets are multi-layered. They have a sun visor on the outside to protect when they're in direct sunlight, and then clear visors underneath for when they're working in shadow. If we look at this video clip taken inside the ISS, we can clearly see the helmet has two layers, which is creating two reflections of objects. Now you might be thinking, hold on, the helmet produces two reflections, but we're seeing three light spots, so how does that add up? Well, it turns out we're actually seeing four light spots, not three. Wally pointed out when he sent me the video, as the astronaut moves into shadow, the top spot completely disappears. But we also see the middle spot gets a lot dimmer than it was, and yet the bottom spot doesn't really change. That's because what we are seeing is the sunlight shining straight through gaps in the ISS, creating this bright strip of light, but we're also seeing a reflection of sunlight coming off the ISS itself. And we can even see this in Elio's clip. Just before the astronaut lifts up his sun visor, we catch a view of the sun itself and the light from the sun reflecting off the ISS. So that is shining some fill light in from a slightly different angle, which is why that is still able to reach the visor even when the main source of sunlight is blocked. Like how if you were to look at a bright light and then have a mirror in between you and the light placed at an angle that you can still see the light in the mirror, and you then hold up your hand to block the light source itself from reaching your eye, you'll still see the light being reflected off the mirror. We are seeing the sun and its reflection in the visor twice due to the double layered visor. The sun from the lower reflection is overlapping the reflected sunlight of the upper reflection. So that was pretty straightforward, but like I said, Wally and I wanted to do better than that. And we figured the obvious step would be to find the original full version of the video rather than this short section that's been selected by LEO to see does the astronaut move the camera at all, or even if the original video was a higher quality than LEO's and might show some other details or perhaps a clearer reflection. Obviously, the easiest thing for this would have been if LEO had provided a link to the original video, which we both knew he wouldn't do, but we were curious as to how much he'd try and avoid it, so I asked. Turns out, quite a lot. He ended up asking for demonstrations about tower cranes as though those are somehow related to this video. By this point, we were actually well on the way to finding the original ourselves, so we didn't need the link off him, but the fact that he wouldn't provide it, even for his own viewers to see, made us suspicious that there were maybe some details in the original that he didn't want people to see. Mind you, he also felt the need to hide a comment I'd made, giving several examples of him being dishonest towards his viewers. Anyway, given that the spacewalks are usually about six hours long, and as of August 2023 there have been 267 spacewalks conducted, that's a total of about 1600 hours of spacewalks. So trying to find this short clip whilst flying completely blind was going to be one hell of a challenge. It would help if we knew when the spacewalk took place, so time to break out the detective skills. We can clearly see the astronaut's face but this is not someone that either Wally and I recognized, and there have been over 200 people conduct spacewalks. However, I did notice that the Expedition Insignia is visible on the front of his suit. Now, there have been 69 ISS expeditions to date, and each one has its own unique Insignia design, and a quick Google search told me that this is Expedition 63 from 2020. 
Another quick search showed us that four spacewalks were conducted during this expedition. The full live streams of each we were able to find on YouTube in no time at all. However, with each walk being about six hours, that was still 24 hours in total. Unfortunately, these live streams that are broadcast use a mix of helmet cameras on each astronaut and fixed external cameras on the ISS, but the astronauts also take a GoPro with them that they can mount in whatever area they're working in and move as needed, which is what had recorded the video that Elio had used, but the GoPro footage isn't included in the live broadcasts, meaning we couldn't just skim through the live stream timelines and look for a matching thumbnail preview. We can see though that all four spacewalks were conducted by the same two astronauts, Bob Benkin and Chris Cassidy. And comparing to the face that we can see through the visor, it's clear that we're looking at Chris Cassidy here. Now, NASA ISS spacewalks usually consist of two astronauts, which are designated EV-1 and EV-2. EV-1 has red markings on their suits, such as red stripes around the legs and red markings on the life support, while EV-2 doesn't. This makes it easier for Mission Control to determine which astronaut they're looking at when they're viewing on the external cameras. And it also makes it easier for us too, because we can see that Chris's suit here doesn't have any red stripes, meaning that he is EV2 during this clip. Of the four spacewalks during the expedition, he was EV1 for the first two and EV2 for the second two, meaning we've already narrowed this down to being part of either US Spacewalk 67 or 68. And it was around this time that Wally managed to track down this video from channel called Videos of Space, which was entitled, This is How You Work in Space at an Altitude of 250 Miles. The video only has a handful of views and likely we would have never have stumbled across it were it not for us finding out specifically who these astronauts were, because their names were included in the video description. While this video doesn't tell us much more about what happens after Elio's video ended, other than Chris pivots the camera slightly before it cuts to a completely different shot, presuming at this point that he's moved the camera to cover his next job, it does cover more of what Chris was doing in the build-up to where Elio's video begins. And we were able to determine that Chris was trying to remove a H-fixture from the ISS as part of their upgrades to the power systems, and seemingly he was having some difficulty doing so. Having to take a few goes to before getting it off and then packing up and moving on. Wally then did a fantastic job bringing up the transcripts of the YouTube live streams and searching through them for some likely keywords such as GoPro and H-Fixture. And we were able to pinpoint the exact moment in Spacewalk 68 that we see what is happening in Elio's video, but from a different camera view. And as we knew how long into the spacewalk this was taking place and when the spacewalk began, we were able to use the ISS tracker and its position is showing us passing along the east coast of Africa around Mozambique, which would mean that this strip of land is the coast of Mozambique and this would in turn be Madagascar. So I pulled up the recorded weather data for Africa at that time and date and we can see the cloud formations shown in the ISS footage match up perfectly to the weather records. But we're not done yet. Because then by a stroke of luck I managed to stumble across a video that was uploaded two years ago to a small channel called SpiceX 4K which is entitled NASA US EVA 68 Action Camera Spacewalk Footage which is almost six hours of footage recorded by that GoPro from that spacewalk. Almost two hours of it is inside the ISS as they're getting prepared for the spacewalk. The astronauts then in the airlock and actually showing them move from inside the airlock to outside onto the spacewalk and beginning their work. Then at around 2 hours 27, we see Chris set up the GoPro to begin the work on the H-bracket. He works on the bracket for about half an hour, and then at 2 hours 55, we see him come over and pick up the camera to relocate it. This is the snippet of video that we see from LEO. However, all of this GoPro footage is completely uncut. We see Chris pick up the GoPro and head over to another area of the ISS to meet up with Bob, and the GoPro is still recording this whole time. And at times, it points in the direction of the sun. And we can clearly see it's only one light source i.e. the sun, and a strip of light reflecting off part of the ISS bodywork, corresponding perfectly to the double reflection in the double visor that we covered earlier. 
Then I figured we have this huge uncut stream of GoPro camera footage along with the full spacewalk stream from two suit cameras and multiple fixed cameras across the ISS. So I took about an hour long single piece of the GoPro footage which included LEO's segment and I synced up the GoPro footage to the full live stream around one moment where Chris is packing his tools away before coming to get the GoPro. And I placed the two videos side by side and the two match up perfectly across the whole hour. Every tiny movement we see the astronauts make match up between the two videos, regardless of whether it's a view from Chris's helmet cam with the number 18 in the corner, or Bob's helmet cam with the number 20 in the corner, or one of the external cameras, they always match the GoPro footage, which is one continuous uncut video. So flat earthers can't claim that the ISS live streams are cutting between different pieces of video footage because if they were, they would have fallen out of sync with the uncut GoPro footage. And the GoPro often shows us views looking in opposite directions to the other cameras that we can see. So we can see they're not in a studio or on a plane. I'm probably going to upload the full one hour synced video as a separate video because I think it'll make a great reference tool for people arguing with flat earthers. And I'm also hoping to include the ISS tracker position and the weather images for comparison during it as well, just to make it even more damning. I'll link it up here and in the description once it's finally uploaded. All of this I would say is pretty damning for flat earthers. Perfectly matched up movements between the different cameras, showing the faces of the astronauts, their reflections, matching exact weather records, and bearing in mind that not only is this just one of over 260 spacewalks that are being conducted, many of which have such live streams and videos available, but we didn't even pick it. It's not like Wally and I specifically chose that spacewalk because we'd found evidence that suited us. LEO picked it. He could have picked any one of over 260 spacewalks, but he landed on that one. And from that clip, with a bit of detective work, I would say Wally and I absolutely ripped it apart. Once again, a massive thank you to Where's Wally for all his work with this. I'll leave a link to Wally's channel below. I'll also leave a link to the various videos and streams that we found along the way, as well as the synced up video comparison once it's uploaded. If you've enjoyed this video and you haven't already done so, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons and hopefully we'll see you in the next video.